Welcome to Swashbuckling with Code. I just ate a crumble cookie and I'm going into a food coma. And we're gonna learn today about the onCreate node method from Gatsby, which will help us solve a little problem that we ran into on the last episode with our progressive web app. So if you will recall from last time, we left off with uh, having this issue where we were getting this question mark for a progressive web app, but not on our homepage, only on our, uh, our sub pages here. And uh, I mentioned what I thought it might be, and it was indeed that, but uh, solving it, I think, uh, is a little interesting. So I wanted to make a video on how I did that. So we're gonna walk through that. So first, let's take a look at our GraphQL server currently. So if we pop that in here to the browser, and uh, wipe out that query. And then what I want to show is, um, this is kind of where I would first start if I'm looking for like path type stuff. If you go to all site page, that will give you all of your pages, like their data that it's going to use. And there is a path parameter here. Now this path parameter you'll see um, puts out these slash first, second, etc., And it's all of our slugs um, from our markdown because we created that. Let me show you that real quick. Do, do, do. Um, we created that right here. When we, when we make each one, we loop over these and we say uh, node.frontmatter.slug. And, and so when we create the page, this effectively ends up being it. But you'll notice that we have a slash 404 slash uh, here and dev 404 page with a slash. And that's kind of interesting. We have a trailing slash on these. now. Immediately what I thought about there was, okay, well, those are created pages in the pages directory. So Gatsby probably automatically does that. So if we create a new file and let's just do like woof.js, I'm not even gonna add anything there. I just wanna see if GraphQL will, you know, if uh, the Gatsby ecosystem will just pick it right up and it does in our GraphQL. So notice it has a trailing slash. All right. So it looks like something might be set up weird here. So the next thing that I would do here is I would say, okay, well, I don't usually build it this way. I know that, let's go back to the docs that we referenced when we were um, setting the site up for a Gatsby source file system. This is the adding markdown pages um, documentation here. And when we go to scroll down through this, you'll notice that their slug doesn't have a trailing slash either. So that's kind of interesting. Um, coming down further, we, we don't need to worry about that query. We want to worry about where we're querying for it. And if we look at their code, you'll see that they use the node.frontmatter.slug, which they just query off of edges node front matter slug. All right. So we might have a little situation here where the docs are actually kind of guiding you toward, I would say, the wrong direction um, for how to set up your, your Gatsby um, page creation. And that's because, well, it's kind of a loaded thing because uh, you could opt to have non-trailing slash URLs, but by default, um, from what I've seen, most of the sites are gonna set it up all with trailing slash. So Netlify is just gonna do that automatically. And let me briefly talk about why that is so that you understand that. So if we were to look into um, our public directory here, which is where our site gets generated out and it's what's used you know, on our host, our server host, and we dial down any of these things, we'll notice that these folders are the URL and then they're index.html. And this was a tr traditional way to like host uh, flat or static file systems, um, you know, way back when, before we were doing like routing with servers and all that type of stuff. And so this is the way that kind of the web works with the whole argument, the trailing slash versus non-trailing slash thing. Basically, the first thing you need to know is you just want to be consistent throughout your whole site. You want to have one or the other. And uh, the second part to know is that it doesn't really matter one way or the other, but it's a little more logical for a file system type to have trailing slashes because what the, you know, the browser is saying there is that, oh, the, at this folder, we're going to have like, uh, let's say yourwebsite.com slash second slash index.html. Now you don't typically see index.html on ours or most websites. Um, that are modern because, um, well, in this situation, Netlify is actually going and doing a thing called pretty URLs, which is transforming that to get rid of that index HTML. So you just hit slash second. 
And that's really what's happening under the hood, but that trailing slash is kind of telling it that it's it's the traditional format for it being a directory structure. Whereas the non-trailing slash is a little more common for situations where like you have a server that routes traffic wherever you want and you just tell it to go straight to this URL. You don't need to really know that in depth. I just thought it might be useful um, when you're trying to do a Gatsby site to have a little bit of that background knowledge or any static site generator, that's the way that they usually do it. You're always gonna have all trailing slashes. That's what's gonna be assumed. And fighting against that can be a headache, just so you know. So with that being said, um, we can get rid of this wolf.js. And our assumption here should be that if we go to, um, let's see here. Dun, 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 dial this back up. If we go to this first MD and we were to take this first markdown and we add this trailing slash here, um, that should actually serve our purposes just fine. So let's try to take a look at that on uh, localhost 8000 here and see if we then go to slash first markdown. Now notice I'm not going to type a trailing slash here. I'm just gonna hit enter and notice it added it, okay? So that's how the, the slug generation's supposed to be. Um, if you want to keep it with all trailing slashes. If we go to the network tab here, um, it's kind of a little bit um, iffy depending on if you reload or you just press enter here. So if I like hard refresh, you're going to see we get this 200 here uh, hitting slash. Um, but we'll also get that if we do a... Uh, oh, no, we got our 301 here. Cool. Okay, so uh, nice. This is the issue that I was having before is... Um, I was getting the 301 redirect behavior when I looked at the network tab. So I was kind of confused as to what was happening, but really it's it's something to do with the, the URL that's being pushed up there, um, perhaps by the, um, the router in the single page app. But really what's going down is that uh, we need to add a trailing slash to all of our stuff. Now, we could just do it this way and call it good. You could just say, oh yeah, you just got to remember to do that. But really, what we should be doing is saying, shouldn't we be automating this? I feel like we don't really need to even type in this slug. We should just be getting it from the file name here. And that's what the uh, the Gatsby starter does. So let's take a look at how they do that. So we could say like Gatsby starters. And I'm particularly talking about the blog one. That's one of the most common. So if we go to this and we scroll down, there is a source button you can click. We want to go to their source code. And I'm trying to see, okay, if I go to their Gatsby node, what's it look like? How's it different than mine? And as I'm scrolling through here, what I'm particularly looking for is the create pages, which we just found. Are they doing something different than me? When they query, notice that they're querying for fields slug, whereas we, let's go back to our code, are querying for, at this current point in time, edges node front matter slug. So I'm thinking, okay, fields, huh? What's, what's up with that? Let me go and see if on my all markdown remark, do I have a fields? Because I just use that. Where's that coming from? Notice I don't. I don't have a fields at all. I have a front matter for the slug. I can query for that. But I don't have a fields. So that takes me back to uh, their example. I'm like, where, where are they getting fields from? And the long of the short here is as I'm looking through this, I notice that there's this on create node that they're doing. And, and I, uh, I've used this a bunch uh, at work or on the job at a scale, like larger scale Gatsby project. And it's a really nice method that allows you to add custom fields to any node that's being generated, including ones that you're not creating. Um, so you can imagine that like uh, Markdown is going and sourcing all these sourcing all this content into GraphQL nodes, and we can get in the middle of that and be like, hey, hey, hold up while you're doing that. Let me give you a field that I'd like you to put on these. All right. So I'm going to show you how that works. And I think that it'll actually make the most sense. Well, we'll copy paste it from theirs first and get it working. Okay. So if we copy that and we move over to our Gatsby node, we want to add this here this little method, and it's on create node. And let me break down kind of how this works for you. So on create node is going to give us this node actions and get node um, that we're pulling off here. It's part of the single parameter object. And then from actions, we're going to get create node field off. Now that's where the magic's going to happen. 
and create node field, you're going to say, OK, what's the node that you want to manipulate? What is the value that you want to give this field? And what's the name of the field? In this case, the field is slug. I don't know why they always do these backticks. I prefer to just keep it a string if you're not going to interpolate a variable, but whatever, you know. Uh, here is where we're checking, hey, what is the node.internal.type? Now, if you're curious about this, let's just say, OK, well, let's say um, internal type. Put a space there and then do node.internal yep, type. Let's see what all we got here. And they're, they're saying, hey, uh, when it is a markdown remark type, let's add a, uh, a field to it. And this is the last piece of it that was um, uh, a little bit new to me, actually. I haven't used this create file path, but it comes with uh, the starter. So if we were to take a look at this, if we go back to their code, I say, where is this coming from? Well, it's actually up here, create file path, and it's coming from Gatsby source file system. And we're like, OK, so we got to import that. No big deal. And what I want to show is in the docs, let's do uh, Gatsby source file system. Should take us to the docs here. And then I want to look for that, um, that create field method here, create file path. And here it is. So when you read about it real quick, it says, when building pages from files, you often want to create a URL from a file's path on the file system. For example, if you have a markdown file, blah, 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 nature of reality index.md, you might want to turn that into uh, nature of reality just slash. Yeah, that is what we want to do. So create file path is a helper function to make this task easier. Cool. So that's exactly what we want. And you'll notice that there's these interesting fields here that it takes a node, it takes a get node, it takes a base path, and it takes trailing slash. And they've gone and like documented all this for us, which is really cool, showing you that uh, whether you want your file path to contain a trailing slash or not, and it defaults to true. So that is why we don't have to pass that in. All right, so that puts us here. And now we're just getting a little bit more familiar uh, with what's going on here. So we're gonna get that create file path little helper we're going to use that. We're going to pass in the node and this get node function that it expects. And then it's going to give us back this value, which is going to be the file path with the slash there. Cool. So now let's go ahead and go back to our terminal. It looks like we need to rerun this process. And then we'll check out our GraphQL and we'll see if that's there. Now, first, look at all this. These are our internal types. We can see, oh, yeah. These are each of these. So pretty much every single time that a node, uh, a type is being set up, um, it's going to give us that individual node. But that's why it's on create node. It's like, hey, while, uh, while me, Gatsby, I'm building all these uh, nodes for you, if you want to do anything with them, you know, here's, there's a method for it. And you can see that we have two of the markdown remarks. OK, so let's check that out in our GraphQL. So let's reload. And notice we now have fields here. And we can get fields slug. And you can see that we have a, uh, from the front matter, we have first markdown. From the front matter here, we have second markdown. And then the slug is second. You might wonder, why is it first and why is it second? Well, that's because that's what the actual files are named, first MD and second MD. And we just changed it to this when we, were, when we had duplicates of data. So what I'm actually going to do is we're, we're going to use that now to build out those pages. And so now that we know that we can grab it, we can actually change this to just be, hey, I want it from fields slug instead. So here, uh, we're going to pass in fields, node.fields slug, node.fields slug. We're just going to swap it everywhere we find it. We're saying the path to this page is node field slug. And the context is passing node field slug. And the whole purpose of that is when we call our markdown template, that's part of what we query for. And that'll be right here. And so because we're passing the slug in, we're going to use that here to find this individual page. So we're actually going to want to change this to fields because we're not uh, querying against the uh, front matter version of the slug. We're querying against the fields version of the slug now. And we're not using it anywhere else. And so I think that should be good. Let's take a look at this. We'll reload. 
And we don't have this particular front matter of null. Um, okay. Let me take a look at what this is. Uh, fields, front matter. Mm, what is this? Let me think about this for a second. Cannot read property front matter of null. So we're not getting markdown remark. Is it possible that we need to restart our server? I don't think so, but let's take a quick look at the code. Um, perhaps our query isn't working, actually. If our server starts back up, let's check the GraphQL, huh? <laughs> GraphQL, where are you? And we want to say, hey, I actually want to, um, what, are, what are we doing in our code? We're doing a, we're just querying markdown remark individually. So let's kill all that, let's say markdown remark. I want to query you by fields. I want your slug to equal, and then let's just make one here like first. Uh, and it's actually slash, right? And that seems to work. Fields, slug. Hmm. It's possible we might need to clean. Let's come back here. Test this out. Reload. Interesting. Let's go to just first. Why don't we? That's working fine. Okay. So I think that's going to be fine once we push it up. It's just that it has like the old version still. So we're switching to that. Um, then we should have a second, not markdown. And that works too. And you see if we kill that slash, there it auto puts the slash. So while we're at it, let's just get rid of those slugs so we don't even feel like we need to use those anymore. So we're going to get rid of that slug. We're going to get rid of that slug. We're just throwing salt everywhere. Okay, so now in the markdown template, we get rid of this slug because we don't want to query for it ever again. And I think we should be good with that. Let's make another check. Let's go to first. That's looking pretty good to me. All right. So you can see how this is all kind of starting to come together using this. And um, what I'll do is I'm going to push this up. So let's make a quick commit. And then while that's deploying, I'll show you uh, a little bit about like uh, how that whole uh, create nodes working, just a, a silly example to kind of solidify that because I think it's a really useful tool to have. And then we'll check out our Lighthouse course. So we're getting rid of that. We're getting rid of that. And then we are going to switch that over. And so we're going to say add um, create. Well, let's just add slug through create node fields. Is that the name of it actually? On create node. Create node field. Yeah, just create node field. Commit that. Get push. You see master. And there we go. So all I really want to show here is like let's get rid of this this log type. But um, we we noticed that we had a a file type up here somewhere. Let me scroll up here. Yeah, we've got these files, right? So let's say on all of our files, we want to say, hey, if the node.internal.type is equal to file, um, let's create node field, field. And we're gonna say that, um, let's just pass the node the name is going to be, let's say it's cheese. And then the value, let's just hard code all of them with like sharp, okay? Quite goofy, I know. All right, build again. E, F, I don't see it. Let's log out. If node.internal.type equals file, console.log, got a file. Attempting to create page slash first, but page slash first already exists. This could lead to a non-deterministic routing behavior. Oh, we do need to fix that actually. Good warning. So really we had this page data 
and we don't really want to use that anymore. That was just our original demonstration. We'll just completely get rid of that. And then in our Gatsby node, um, we can also get rid of this whole loop right here. Okay. And we don't need this data anymore. And we should definitely push that up because we might have some issues with our routes colliding. And while that deploy is going on, we did got a file here. Now we really should see, maybe I didn't reload. All file, edges, node, fields. I must just not have reloaded or I'm blind. Here you go. So now, isn't that fun? All of our files have the cheese field on them that we could query from now on with Sharp. Now that's all hard coded, of course, um, but we, what we would probably do is we do you know, something to the effect of where, hey, if you're a file and your extension is JS, then you are a milk cheese. And, you know, if you are a markdown, you're a goat cheese and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we can do whatever we want there. It gives us a lot of power to be able to um, just kind of throw different properties as we get them, um, particularly when we're not the ones that's processing that data when markdown remark is the one that's creating these nodes for us, and we want to interject a little bit there. All right, so let's wrap this up by checking out our deploy, seeing if that's finished. And then now what we're gonna do is this uh, route should not exist anymore if we go here. Oh, it still seems to though. There we go, hard refresh got rid of it. And then uh, we'll go to, oops. Don't autocomplete that, please. We'll go to first, and you notice that that redirected to the trailing slash. And then what we'll do is we'll clear this. I'm just gonna hard refresh, generate a report, and hopefully our progressive web app issues are fixed, except for that little icon problem that we had before, because that's actually us not providing a proper icon. Okay. So we are still having this one error. Our other issues are gone as far as HTTP traffic to HTTPS. Um, and this one uses HTTPS and the redirect registers a service worker, current page responds to 200 offline. All this is looking good and we're getting the one badge, but this one still isn't working. Let us try just the second page and see how that turns out for us. All right, it's looking like the same result here. So we're still getting this, the start URL did not respond or did respond, I can't read that for some reason, but not via a service worker, okay? All right, well, this has been quite the fun bug. Uh, I've been working on this for a few days now, embarrassingly. And uh, I think I've, I've discerned that this is almost definitely a lighthouse issue in the current browser. Uh, let me show you why I believe that is the way that it is to wrap this video up so that you know we can keep things going. But uh, it's, it's very interesting, very fascinating, and doesn't get more real than this. So it just so happens that this all occurs, you know, of course, right when I'm making this video. This is how it goes, but it's cool. We'll roll with the punches. So I, I was trying to figure out why on the the current site that we're building uh you know of course this this last thing is just not working this this start url did respond but not via a service worker so i have tried so many things uh i have a current site uh my blog and then i have some other sites at work that are all passing with the exact same code i've even installed the exact same gatsby packages all throughout, testing one at a time, pushing them all up, deploying them, seeing if they work that way, seeing if they work locally, seeing if it ever passes the check, and nothing ever changed anything. It never seems to fix this issue. So I went and I looked at some other sources and I found a bunch of issues around this topic with even different platforms. And I even forked uh, Gatsby's starter blog here uh, from just straight up from their starter blog, threw it on Netlify, and it also doesn't pass the check. And the thing that I want to show that gives me a little more confidence in this is if I come down here in the terminal and I run this lighthouse check right here. So you can run lighthouse as a, a command line interface, which is really cool. And I have to do it in PowerShell for mine because WSL it has a problem right now with the opening the browser itself. But let me show you this. So I'm going to run this 
and it brought it up here, but let me bring it down for you. So it runs it in browser like so, but it's also running you know through the CLI. And you'll see that when it's done, it actually passes the check. And I just have installed this as the latest version uh, of Lighthouse. So you know we click down to that and all of our stuff's good. So the things that I've shown so far to configure it all seem to be correct. They're all pointing it to uh, the right way to do it. It just seems like there might be an issue in the current Lighthouse in the browser um, or some sort of you know strange collision of different packages and different things that I can't quite figure out. By the time you're watching this, it might even be gone. So I'm sorry about that rocky road. Uh, you know, it just happens. That's how it goes. But hopefully this kind of resolves that issue and it'll just, like I said, it'll resolve itself, but hopefully this resolves it in your mind that uh, you're setting things up correctly. And I can assure you I've done this a bunch of times on other sites and it works fine for those too. But the show must go on. So I think we're going to move on to the next topic and uh, I'll see you there.